Hey everybody, welcome back to VR Essentials. In today's special video, we've answers questions that you have been asking in the comments of all the various different virtual desktop videos. As I spoke to Guy Godin, the developer and founder himself of Virtual Desktop, of course, and uh, do hit the notification bell after you subscribe as I'll be talking about plenty of videos comparing Virtual Desktop to the Oculus the Meta Quest 3, of course, comparing the uh, Air Link and also the Oculus Link cable, which I haven't ordered yet, but I will order it. And please leave some comments below. Let me know what cable I should order if you have a Meta Quest 2 or Meta Quest 3, and which cable worked with your PC. I'm using an RTX 2070, by the way, and an i7 i7 9700K. So let me know what cable has been working for you that has no issues over the last six months to a year or whatever that you might have been using it with this guy as I will be comparing it with the DPVR E4 4K, the Pimax Crystal and my go-to PC VR headset at the moment, the HP Reverb G2 at this moment in time, everybody. So let's just, before I go into the questions, just want to do a recap. Virtual Desktop is available on the Metal Quest 3 store, everybody. And it's also available on the Pico 4 and a whole bunch of other libraries, also for PC VR. And it basically enables you to stream any of your apps on the Steam Store library, which is the world's largest library for PC games and also VR games at this moment in time. And basically you can, you know, stream directly from your PC to your MetaQuest 3 or your Pico 4 or your MetaQuest 2 or any headset that you know has the virtual desktop available with it basically and the graphics inside are amazing there's other things that you can do of course is you can actually they provide you some environments in VR like a virtual cinema a private condo living room and a whole bunch of other different environments where you can actually control your PC from the VR headset itself so you don't need to go and do it from the PC itself. So it's pretty cool. You can watch movies in those. You can also play, of course, your favorite pancake games and a whole bunch of different things. There was an update very recently. Go and click on the link below after this video to go and check out all the various different updates that just came out a week or two ago, about 10 days or so ago. So do go and check that out. Check those out, excuse me, if you are curious. All right, let's go into the Q&A now. So let me just go into the Twitter, which is where he responded. And thank you very much, Guy, if you're watching today's video, by the way. So the first one was only the NVIDIA. So let me go to my questions. There we go. And uh, and then I'll go because I actually put the, the some shout outs to people on the channel. Drew4422288 said the A41 codec is only supported on 4000 and AMD 7000 series. When, it be, when will it be available for other options so Guy has said only the nvidia 4000 and amd 7000 gpus have a hardware av1 encoder it's not possible on older graphic cards so guys i hope this answers your question that it's simply not available on other cards so that's why it cannot be put on older systems so by the way i have a question i need to do a poll before i continue do you recommend if I upgrade my computer to go for an i5, excuse me, i5-4070 or an i5-4070 Ti or an i7-4080 PC, guys? Because it's really, really expensive. I really want to know, is the difference really that massive, really that big between an i5-4070 or an i7-4080? Is the i5-4070 Ti a nice sweet spot? Please leave me some comments below. I cannot go for the 490. It's not possible. I do know that NVIDIA are going to upgrade in 2.5 years. Well, in 2025, actually, the next gen. So, you know, you have to change the PCI slots and the chip and everything. So, you know, it's quite costly to upgrade from the 2070 i7-9700K, which I have today. But I really want to know, is the difference really that different from the i5-4070 or the i7-4080 and whether the i5-4070 Ti is a nice sweet spot. Please leave comments below. Let me know what I should do. I don't want to go to AMD simply because there are some issues with different VR headsets. So I'm going to stick with Intel at this moment in time. Please let me know in the comments. All right, let's move on to the second question by Dr. Mario Channel. Is this update compatible with Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E? 
Virtual Desktop is compatible with Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6 E. 6 E is only supported on Quest Pro and Quest 3 so far. So there you go, guys. Do take note of this, um, you know, in terms of the upgrades for Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6 E, everybody. Next question. Van Gogh 5521 is asking, so the eye tracking on virtual desktop is just for VR chat, not for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 for VR rendering? If yes, when will it be available for other VR experiences and which experiences are coming first next? All right, so you can use OpenXR Toolkit on PC to get eye tracking in other experiences. Support for virtual desktop was added recently. So there you go, guys, as he just mentioned, OpenXR Toolkit will help you for other things. All right, next question, which is by Django71. Is 4000 series card really needed due to some software limitation or just recommended? Mm, very, very good question there. Um, okay, for C number one. So number one, he, only, he said that only the NVIDIA 4000 series and AMD 7000 GPU have a hardware AV1 coder. So it's not possible on older graphics cards to have the AV1 encoder. So that answers that. You don't need one to use the app on Quest 3. It just unlocks the AV1 codec. The Snapdragon Super Resolution, by the way, increases detail and edges in the image. It blends the secret darker colors with the environment, be it the space nebula or the pass-through environment. This is a question, by the way, that I asked because I really wanted to know what is the freaking difference? Like, what's, what's this for? You know, does it really make a freaking difference or not? So there you go, you got your answer. Another question from me, what is the screen transparency toggle? Above the screen, the first four environments, multiple monitor displays, is this mixed reality or within the VR environments only and or in wow in game? So what is the screen transparency toggle for everybody? This is his answer. The VR pass-through option lets you blend pass-through with your VR game by making a specific color in your game transparency. So personally speaking, I'm still trying to figure this one out. I guess I will have to do some testing. Please leave some comments below about this specific answer, whether you found you know, anything you know, with your Quest 3 or your, your, your Pico 4 or your other VR headsets, uh, whether this really makes a difference in your gameplay, everybody do let me know and let us know in the comments below. All right, last question that I, uh, that senior, uh, okay, what is the VR pass-through option in streaming tab with configurable Chroma King? Okay, I guess, I guess this is basically what he, uh, the VR pass-through option lets you blend pass-through with your VR game by making a specific color in game transparent. Okay, so, uh, that's basically the answer to that. Okay, number five, the last question, which is by Senior YME. Would virtual desktop work with AirBridge? I personally use all my routers at home uh, and already tried out an extra router. It doesn't compare to, it just doesn't compare to AirBridge. All right, so let's see what he says. Yes, it works with the AirBridge dongle, but I don't recommend it. You'll get better performance with a dedicated router. So there you go, guys. If you're using AirBridge, he's not advising you to use it, but it is compatible if you so choose, prefer to, of course, be using it. What kind of VR experiences have you been trying out with the MetaQuest 3 and virtual desktop? Let me know what router and what the community, not just me, what router you've been using, what's been your performance, how has it been going, is it easy going, is the installation process easy? Uh, you know, I'll be doing so many different videos with this. And by the way, today's video is sponsored by VR-Wave.Store, my favorite lens uh, prescription adapter partner, as I've been working with them for about four years, everybody, for the HP Reverb G2 and also the Oculus Quest 1. They are sending me for Pyrex Crystal. It is available for the Crystal, so they will be sending me a pair for that and also for the MetaQuest 3 and also for the Pico 4. So do make sure to hit the notification bell after you subscribe, everybody, as I will be providing you my personal reviews of those specific uh, prescription adapters. 5%, everybody, I'm not like all the other channels. I try to get you a discount. 5% discount using the promo code VR Essentials, everyone. So enjoy the discount as you go to, you know, the VR-Wave.store. Details in the uh, description below, everybody. So I hope this video really you know, brings you value today and you really learned something. If you've got more virtual desktop questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be very happy to talk to Guy and ask him. He's a star, this guy is really willing to help us 
and take the time you know i'm really really so appreciative and hit the likes to thank him guys for taking the time to answer us of course and so that more people can watch and view today's discover today's video so we can grow the vr essentials youtube community all right guys until next time take it easy hope that you like the fact that i put the camera on a tripod today so nothing is moving and wibbling so there you go all right take it easy i'll see you another video very very soon maybe in this one or in that one until next time take care Bye 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 bye